everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today is going to be quite an interesting endeavour indeed. Before we get started, I'd just like to remind you that on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, is going to be our first live stream and it will be at 7pm UK time and I would love to see you all there just to hang out for a couple of hours. The first hour we're going to spend doing some adult colouring and the second hour we're going to do some arting. So if you can come and join us on Tuesday night, that would be Awesome. I've had to brace myself for this one today because today we are returning to our quarterly Artful Box at your request. You guys wanted me to try one of the tutorials from the magazine, which was, uh, this is soft pastels this, this quarter, and you wanted me to try it with pan pastels. Now, we've established that Gem Gem is not a pastel painter, but we do like to learn things. Hey, that could be my new hashtag. Hashtag I am not a pastel painter. <laughs> Just kidding. So uh, I was going to do one of the simpler tutorials just for the simple fact that my, um, you know, we, 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 tr we tried this and we had a relative degree of success, but I can't say that my skills are anything particularly substantial. I was going to go for this little Alpine Lake tutorial, but then I thought to myself, well, we've already done a landscape, uh, so that might be boring. So I'm going to bite the bullet and we are going to try this tamarind. Uh, this is very much out of my skill league, but as you all know, I am not scared. And what's the worst thing that's going to happen? It's going to turn out not very good. No one's going to die. So we're going to go for it. We're going to try and we're going to see how we get on. There is one exception to the rule that I'd like to point out. I will be doing this in pan pastel, but the tutorial requires the use of pastel pencils. So I am going to use the ones that came in the artful box. I think that's only fair. And when I look through the tutorial, in some of the shots, the artist that is providing the tutorial is in fact using the artful pencils. So we're going to do that to keep it fair. A deep breath. The other thing that I've got here is the actual box that it came in. So this is my reference photo. And if we unfold the bottom here, we can see the whole image top to bottom. So I'm going to have that off to the side. Uh, this is a very complicated and detailed picture. And as we discovered in the previous one that we tried out, uh, there's the, the, these don't look like a lot of steps. There's only 12 steps here. Uh, there's going to be a lot of figuring out and a lot of using our observation skills, which is why it's really handy to have the actual image beside you to help you out. So that will also save me flicking back to here as well. In addition to my pastel supplies, the other thing I always have is a damp rag and it's just to wipe my fingers on in case I get pastel everywhere. So in this tutorial by Rachel, who there is an interview with in the magazine and her work's absolutely stunning. Like it, it really, really is. Our work's lovely. She uses a sort of teal coloured paper. Now I don't have a teal coloured paper, but I do have this sort of dual green and it's it's pretty close. So I've got two sheets. I've deliberately done this just so that I can test out some colours on here. So step one is starting with an outline of your drawing using pastel pencils. It doesn't have to be detailed, just enough to form the basic shapes of the tamarind. Use the dominant colour of that part of the tamarind so it will be easy easier to cover later so we should be able to blend it out so you can see here the internal areas that she's mapped in she's used a sort of orangey color and then she's used a paler pencil around the outside that's obviously highlights and then for the face she's actually gone in and used some brown as well so that's kind of what we're aiming for so that by the end of step one this is basically what we want to have going on so we do have a white pencil which we can use the same as Rachel we don't have a brown, we do have this grey pencil that's taken a bit of a beating, but I've got a red one as well. So again, this is exactly why I wanted the spare sheet of paper, see? Handy already. So let's just swatch these out. And there's the grey. Okay, so we can use the grey for the middle features of the face. I think we're going to have to use the yellow. I think the yellow makes more sense for these, the sort of internal parts. And then we've got the white for the outside. Okay, I'm going to go with that and just see how it goes. Now, the other good thing about doing it on a piece of paper this size, I always find, see if it's something you're inexperienced with, working bigger is better because it means you've got more space to try and get in details and things. So let's work out these basic shapes here. I would say the body and the log take up more than two thirds of the paper. So like maybe, yeah, maybe like three quarters of the paper. Now, see, so we can build on this outline. It doesn't need to be you know, the sh the exact shape of what our finished article is going to look like. And then he just kind of like spills over because he's so freaking hairy. All the way down. 
So this is the eraser that came in the, the subscription box. I have kept this solely for for pastels now because that's something I didn't have was an eraser that was just for pastels. So I'll take this away. He looks like a frog. I think I've got too much going on here, but I'm going to reserve judgment. I can always kind of like suck this in a little bit as we go along. Now these are really close to his little face. They're like there. Okay, so I'm happy that that's our starting point. Uh, I do think though, the more and more I look at this, I'm like, nah, to these lines. Okay, so let's make a start on this face. I am absolutely terrified. <laughs> okay, I was almost in meltdown territory there because I couldn't find my white. I thought this was my white and it's not. This is my white. <laughs> so these are the colours I'm going to start with. I'll just leave them there so that you can see them. And this is basically what I can just pick up from what's going on in this image. And so I'm going to keep this one for the white only because these colours are all quite strong and I don't want too much cross-contamination at this early stage. So I'm going to start with the white here and I'm literally just going to follow this image and try and block in what I can from what I can see there. It's got a nice bit of white going on around there. So literally just blocking in like basic, basic colour here. And as we learned from last time as well, that's all about layers. Now there's some quite sharp white highlights around the eye area here and I think I'll probably get them with the uh, with the pencil. I'm just going to put some wee indicators in here for myself just now so that I remember. Now interestingly I've got one of these little tiny applicators that's already got this pinkish colour on it so that's quite helpful. So yeah, right now look at this, that's um that's like suitable nightmare fuel. <laughs> uh okay, the the eyes are the thing that's concerning me because this looks they're very, very defined. If I just show you the tutorial, even in this first step, she's more or less finished the eyes in the first step. So I think we better crack on with those. So I want to get this outer eye shape. And I always find once you're happy with one eye, it's easier to go and look at the other eye and not match them up, but you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Now the actual eyeball itself is actually very, very round, which is interesting as well. I'm going to end up with a psychotic looking, <laughs> a psychotic looking tamarind. I feel like this is where the, the chalk pastels would obviously be advantageous. Um, because we're working in tiny spaces when we're talking about eyeballs, uh, you know, that's a, that's a really, really tight space in there. But I just want to prove that it can be done with pan pastels. I have got pastel everywhere already. We've just started. Shut that up round. I'd like to add a little bit of white into this eye as well because that red's quite, it's quite severe. And then he's got this massive white highlight oh no uh as an eye uh, i'm feeling a bit kind of like meh about this to be honest i do feel like i've got a psychotic tamarind eye going on here right now the uh, the other eyes and a completely different story it's a different shape and the darker areas are a completely different shape it's a very very thick band all the way around the top and very little dark around the bottom compared to the other eye so again that's something that we want to take into consideration my eyeball's actually misplaced as well, which is not helpful. And again, I want this massive sweep of white around the top here. Okay, I think I'm safe to say that um, I've got the base colours down. That's taken me a long time. It's taken me like half an hour, but okay. And now, by some miracle, we have to blend to get to this stage and fi finish in some of the details in the eyes. Uh, now, see, this is very difficult without having any sort of guide in terms of what colours we're using. So we're literally going to have to start blending and just see what happens. And there's a lot of white to go on the inside of that eye as well. Now, there seems to be a lot of depth in the top of the eye socket here, just up the top here. And I really, I don't want to use black because I'm frightened it's just going to like annihilate, like it's going to wipe everything out and it's just going to look really mucky. So I'm going to try and find, I've got like a dark umber colour. 
I've got a raw umber extra dark, so it's not as harsh as black. If I just hold it next to the black, you can see it's a slightly different shade. And I think I feel safer using a little bit of that and trying to blend it in. Okay, yeah, it doesn't look quite, quite as severe there, which is nice. Okay, my white pencil does not want to go on top of anything else. And uh, I've got a feeling I might have to use a white gel pen or a paint pen to really pick out those white highlights. Because this seems to be really smooth down here. Like, this is like one fluid movement. This is really difficult, I think. Oh, this one. Like, this is really hard. Okay, so I just want to build up some more layers on this bit between his head now. And round this nostril area is complicated. Like it's it's complicated. So again, just to kind of like keep me sane, I'm gonna pop his nostril in first because this pencil doesn't seem to like going down on top of much of the other pastel. So I have a nostril. And again, it's kind of got a bit of white round about it, which I think would probably be better doing in the pastel pencil. So I've got a grumpy tamarind, I've got a grumpy tamarind with a wonky mouth and a too small nostril. His face area is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger by the time we're finished, it'll take up the whole page. And again, I feel like this brown colour is a is a really good choice for this. Like I really do. Because there seems to be quite a bit of shadow down there as well. I'm even reluctant to put in more of this purple, you know that. I'll maybe stick a wee bit more in there though. Now that seems a little bit dark and then his mouth line down this side isn't just quite as defined. It only goes to about there. Okay, I think I've got my sides matched up fairly well. Uh, I still think he looks a wee bit too peed off for his own good. I have just tried to match up this other side uh, but I feel as if maybe taking it a bit too far in places. Anyway, I'm going to go on to the next step now. Uh, now, just for reference, so that nobody's getting misled, I've been at this for an hour and a half, so it's taken me an hour and a half to get to this stage, and we're finally finished the first page. There's the face next to where we should be in the tutorial, so uh, not great, but yeah, okay. <laughs> So if we're averaging a page every hour and a half, then I'm only going to be here until uh, quarter past midnight and everything, everything will be fine. Step three, moving on to the first, oh good grief. Uh, moving on to the first, start blocking in the dominant base colours. You can either use the sharp edge of a new pastel stick or create a fine point using a craft knife or sandpaper block. I like to loosely paint the colours to resemble the shape or clumps of fur. Don't worry about making the edges of the tamarind perfect as we'll do that later when we paint the background. Oh my god, I forgot we've got the background to do. I knew I should have brought beer for this. <laughs> so I think I'm going to have to do a little bit of mixing here. I don't actually have a true orange, so it's going to be red and yellow, but we can make orange with red and yellow. He's going to be a cheery tamarind in front on the on the furry part, <laughs> just not on his face. What's wrong with your face? Now, I suppose you can kind of use your own um, your own judgment here, really, because the the fur, you know, that's not it's not like um, you know, like it has to be anatomically correct. Because when it comes to fur, it depends which way the wind's blowing. I'm sure anybody that's got any hair will know. I know that better than most because I live somewhere really windy and my hair's ridiculously long. So I'm going to start down at his chin part here. And then we've got this chest area here. Again, I think we've got a bit more artistic license here. Okay, uh, for some unbeknown reason, I now have to start blending this and making it look like actual fur, which I think is going to be easier said than done, if I'm honest. Because we, she's literally gone from that to having like all the fur blocked in, apart from this part on the top of his head. So I may be here for some time, so I'm going to mix some of this stuff together now. And just see if I can get something that resembles fur. <laughs> If I jump forward six bajillion steps, um, I can actually see that on uh, down in this bottom corner here, that this is almost all yellow down here, and then it stops quite abruptly. So I have to try and match that with those lines that I've put in there. So basically, um, I've been at this for a while now, and I just look as if I've got a big hairy dish mop that's got a grumpy face. <laughs> 
I feel like I'm getting there with the colours, but it's just not going the way I wanted it to go. And I feel as if I'm going to be here forever blending uh, certain areas out. The next step after blocking in the colour of the fur, uh, she talks about using the black pastel pencil to start adding shadows. Now to me that's uh, that's a fairly big jump from adding in shadows, you know, going from here to here. And she doesn't talk about this dark patch underneath at all. So we're going to do this completely by eye. And to be perfectly honest, I'm now at the stage where we're just winging it. We are actually just winging it. Um, other than using the, the black and the white pencils. I'm going to try and finish off the head area. I'm going to work from the top down now. Uh, but yeah, I feel like there's not enough instruction now. It says at step five, so step four, they were talking about shadows with the black pencil. And step five is use the white pastel pencil to create highlights and individual hairs. And then step six says continue to add highlight highlights the different areas of the fur using light pastel colours that complement the base colours. So that's about building up layers. And then she goes on to talk about adding finer details to the tamarind's face. And then after that we're on to feet the feet and the log. So basically the we're supposed to have a finished tamarind down to here by the end of this step. And there's as far as I'm concerned, there's loads of steps missing. So at this point, I'm gonna grab the box which is my, my reference, if you remember. Hello. And uh, we're going to pop him there. And uh, I'm just going to start working away and see what I can do here with uh, with what I've got because, uh, the to be honest, we're not getting an awful lot of direction. But I feel as if this, like, these steps here that are missing now, I feel as if these should be done in pencil. And obviously when it comes to pencils in the box, we don't have a huge amount of choice. So that's maybe why these steps have been cleverly omitted. This tutorial, good grief. This is certainly way, way out of my comfort zone. Because of that, though, I mean, I'm not going to shy away from it because of that. And that's just not, not really in my vocabulary. But for anyone who's wanting to try these supplies out... Uh, even if there was some sort of difficulty rating, you know, like a grading or something on the tutorials, you know, like a star rating or something to let people know how much, uh, you know, how advanced it is or how many extra tools you're going to need or how much of your own imagination you're going to need to get through the steps. That I think that's something that would be really, really helpful uh, because I am way out my depth with this, like way, 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 way out my depth with this. And to be fair, I've gotten on okay with the face and I think that's mostly luck, <laughs> I'll be honest. And what's going on here now, I just feel like requires, uh, you know, like a little bit of skill because there's so many steps missing. And I feel that that's, that could be something that's quite disheartening for somebody that maybe doesn't have a lot of confidence in things like this. Now, obviously, I've spent a long time now just jumping into things and filming it for your guys' benefit, and I'm not really sensitive to, you know, any kind of disasters that might befall me. I just kind of like, yeah, whatever. It'll be fine, you know, if it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I understand that not everybody feels the same way about that, and I would hate for people to be disheartened because they've started this and realised too far in that they've bitten off more than they can chew. And, I, I mean, I kind of feel like that just now but I will persevere. I'm not really enjoying the fact that this pastel pencil is doing nothing. And when I do go over the pastel with the pencil, it's picking up, it's picking up the colour of the pastel and taking it with it. So it's uh, it's mixing it basically. Uh, I don't know whether it's because I'm pressing too hard with the, with the pencil or whether I've pressed too hard putting down the the actual pastel itself but I'm just taking gouges out the paper now like I'm actually leaving a black mark there instead of a white mark and yet if I come back over here it's working no problem so that's obviously operator error um, and that's a lesson for me for next time as I say this is not you know I am completely inexperienced when it comes to this now I'm just wondering what's going to happen then if I've ruined the tooth of this paper what's going to happen if I go in with a dark brown and try and go over the top of some of this is it just going to go Arr. And the answer is no. Maybe I can rescue this. Okay, his head's looking like a head. Okay, mm I'll go. I'll, I'll take it. I will take it. I don't know what I'm going to do with these sections down here. I really don't. These are starting to get progressively darker. So I think I might go back to the sienna and just... Like, oh my. Okay, back to the grind we go. 
Now this underneath section seems to have a lot more yellow in it for some reason, so that's just what I'm going to go with in here. I'm going to at least finish the tamarind. I probably won't do the background because I, I think I would like to be done with this today. It started off so promising as well. I felt as if, um, even though there was a few steps lacking in terms of the face, it was easy enough to follow, uh, you know, just by observation, whereas I feel that there's far too much missing when we're talking about the fur and one thing and another. And I, f I do kind of feel as if I'm out on my own here, I'm out on a limb. Uh, and I, I remember saying that last time about the um, about the last tutorial that I did as well. And again, you know, I've mentioned this already. I'm not an insecure person when it comes to stuff like this. If I can't find the steps, I'm usually like, yeah, do you know what? I'll figure it out or I'll get something close to it and it'll be okay. But I just, I don't feel that way at all about this. I am completely out at sea. We can't have always though. We can't have, you know, really detailed tutorials crammed into like four pages in a magazine like we can't we, we just can't um they're so like the level of detail in this fur is so high though and i just feel like um most people unless they are very seasoned pastel artists would benefit from a wee bit more guidance with this so i'm doing as the tutorial said i'm going in with lighter pastel shades uh, and i'm really just trying to pick out some areas of the fur just to give it a little bit more dimension. I, this section underneath here is basically just dark brown. They give you no instruction what you're supposed to be doing with it. So again, I'm going to go back to this umber colour that I used around the eyes. So it's not quite black. And uh, I, I, don't, I mean, like, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Not really sure what's going on with the bottom part of this tamarind. Having never seen a tamarind's belly, uh, I'm not entirely sure what the idea is here. I'm assuming it's just because it's in shadow and they are actually that hairy all the way around. Um, or maybe the artist has done this to make their life a bit easier. I don't know. Now there's a bit of fur down here around the foot as well, which I've just completely ignored. <laughs> so I'll need to put that in as well. Oh my, honestly. And this colour down, they've got really hairy feet as well. Wow. That's the first time I really looked at that. So that's these thumb toe nice thumb toe and then this just seems to be like oh okay like there's lots of hair here and then all of a sudden it just kind of goes oh and disappears into everything else like magic and again this is just like um this is just like a big dark mass in here that's been very very severely superior superiorly blended out because it just kind of like mer merges into the rest of his body but see this is talking about adding shadow and you know, blah, blah, blah. And I feel by the adding the pencil, I'm just making it look really scrappy. I don't feel like I'm actually adding any any value to the image here. Okay, there's not much uh, help for the log either. Um, they're basically saying use uh, select, select shades of green and kind of smoosh them together. Okay, I'm going in, going in with the fingers for this. <laughs> I need to define a sort of edge here, and I do notice that in the in the pastel drawing there is a definite edge here, and there's a shadow. Um, and I think the easiest way to do that is incorporating this pencil. So that's just what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that edge runs all the way down there, and I feel it. It just looks really the black pencil, especially, just looks really false. So again, just to define out some of these claws, I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with them. I seem to be wanting to deal with an awful lot of stuff later. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest not to press hard with this pencil, but it's very difficult. Okay, I've had a chance to regroup and calm down a little bit. I was getting very frustrated there. I've had a bit of a tidy up. Now, I know this isn't the answer, but it's Gem Gem's answer. Uh, I have got a Posca 1MR pen here. This is the smallest nib Posca pen you can get. And it's no coincidence, I am going to be selling these in the stash shop in the not too distant future. They probably won't be up for another week or so, but I'll be selling black and white ones. And they have a teeny tiny nib on them. Come on, autofocus, you can do it. Like this, teeny tiny nib. And that is what we are going to use to make this look like it's supposed to look. And I am literally just going to start at the top. Oh, look, instantly better. And off we go.
Look at how much fun I'm having. Can we just zoom in a little bit? I just, yeah. Can you see that, the difference that that's making? That one tiny little thing. And that is all that I needed to make me happy. As I said at the start, I knew this wasn't going to be perfect or anything like it because I am not a pastel artist. I enjoy pastels sometimes. This exercise made me enjoy it an awful lot less. <laughs> um, but now, something as simple as a white paint pen can make this oh so much more enjoyable. And it takes away from the realism a little bit, but again, do you know what? I'm actually okay with that. Like I don't I don't really care right now. Okay, <laughs> I really don't care. What it does make me do is look at my artwork and think, well, at least it's not a dog. <sighs> and I mean that in the not very good sense, not in the canine sense, obviously. <laughs> I just I feel as if I've failed the world on this this underside part here as well. I just I don't know I, I don't really know what to do with this, to be honest. It wasn't really explained enough as far as I was concerned. Uh, this shouldn't even have highlights at all because it's actually underneath. But again, just making myself feel better. And I really need to give him his hairy little face now as well, which I don't really want to do either if I'm truthful. But let's do it. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to call this quits. Guys, this is absolutely epic. You can see how unfinished this bottom part looks. I am much happier for using a 1MR Posca pen. And I am just going to sign this at the bottom with this pen just to prove a point. Well, that was epic. Okay, so there's the original box art. And you can see how rich and deep the colours are. And you can see what I gave up. But on the whole, this was a really good experience. This was a great learning experience for me. And uh, I realised that I'm much better at drawing monkey faces than I am drawing monkey hair especially when it comes to pastels. So I hope this has been enlightening for you. I hope this hasn't scared you off from doing stuff like this, but just be prepared. Now that you've seen me do it, you know what to expect. And hopefully you can carry on and uh, maybe create a more finished artwork than I've managed to do. So that is it for today, everyone. I want to thank you very much for watching. We got there in the end. It's only taken me four and a half hours. <laughs> I will see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video if I don't see you in the live stream on Tuesday night. So have a good day everyone and bye bye for now.